Okay, so this one was a tangent line, not to be confused with a secant line that goes through twice. So number one should have been K. All right, number two, what do we think that is? This one does not come outside the circle at all. It stays inside. Is that an arc? Is that a central angle? Is that a chord? Is that a concentric circle? What do you guys think? Anyone get an answer for that? Nobody's got an answer for that? Or we're just scared to say it? Okay, I'm going to go through. Everybody is going to give me what they think it is. Everybody's going to give me a letter or a name of the word would be even better, okay? I'm going to start in the back with Morgan. Morgan, throw out a word for number two. Yep. Uh, You're just throwing out a word. You're just letting me know if we don't know. Okay. I'm, I can't see. Is that Chloe next to you? Your head's down. Yes, Chloe, go for it. Okay. I'm going to Jordan. Okay. I'm going to Jada. Secant. I'm going to Bella. Good. I'm going to Lucas. Okay. I'm going to Ethan. Do you have this practice test out, Ethan? Uh, that's the other worksheet. So do me a favor. We are, um, this practice test is going to be attached with my key, but if you can get your notebook out and just take some notes, that'd be good. I'll come back to you. So take out a, any piece of paper, um, or you can open it up on Cami. It's up to you. Uh, what do you think, Yazzie? Okay. What do you think, Brian? Okay. What do you think, James? Cord. Okay. What do you think, Ariadna? Okay. And Gloria? ¿Sabes cuál palabra es? Okay. This one was D chord. So look at the difference between the secant that I just drew in and the chord. Does the secant stop at the edge of the circle? Nope, the secant keeps going. Does the chord stop at the edge of the circle? Yes. Now, where was this chord? This was way back in the 5.2 when we first did the start of circles. So your 5.2 study guide in the big book could help, but check this out. A chord is any line across a circle. A diameter is a chord. It's just a special kind of chord. Does that help you guys clarify between secant and chord? Okay, so secant keeps going. What You know how I said that the tangent tangent rule is the same as the secant secant rule? Well, what would the secant secant circle look like? It would have two lines that go through the circle. There's my secant secant rule, okay? And remember, you guys have that justifications page to look at. It's got pictures. All right, here we go. Uh, number three. Anybody have an idea? To try to speed this along so you guys have plenty of time for a test, please, please, please share if you think you know what it is. Number three, what word do we think that is? And by the way, when we use one, right, go cross it out. So we used chord and we used tangent. Okay, what is this thing right here? Think you know it, Grace? No, I think I know it from the two. Okay, what number three or four? Number three. I think it's F. F is uh, do you mean number four or number three? Oh wait, no, yeah, number four. Number four is inscribed angle. F. So go ahead and put that one there. So go cross out inscribed angle. And inscribed angle is at the edge of the circle for that angle. Perfect. And then anyone know number three? Number three is central angle, you guys. Was anyone thinking that? So notice that they gave me only four lines. They only want to know four things, but they gave me lots of word choices. Some are real things and some are fake things. So that's what makes this one confusing because you have so many choices. Any questions on the four vocab that you're about to have on the test? Could the test have the other things? Could it have a picture of an arc and you'd have to... Do you have a computer that you could literally search up words? When you're searching up math words, don't just type arc. Who knows what it's going to pull up? Type up geometry, circles, arc. You know, be specific so it pulls up the right thing and not like an arc bridge and you're like, what the heck?
Okay. Okay. So here we go. Moving down to the next one. It says, identify the tangent of a circle. Now that we just did that practice vocabulary, please write your answer response. And um, I'm now going to move to Chloe. I had Morgan try one first. Chloe, do you think it's A, B, C, or D for the tangent of a circle? So C is that sneaky secant that keeps getting us. Secants keep going through a circle. They touch twice. So put a little note to yourself. Secants touch twice here and here. Okay, I'm going to Jordan. Can you guess which one is the tangent, A, B, or D? A is our tangent. Tangent touches once. Does that now make more sense, Chloe? You see that one? Now look back up at the top, look at the tangent example from number one as well. And that's right there to refer to. Jada, do you know what B or D are called? Just for our reference in case the test we get has the other one. B or D is a chord. Now, B is also a chord, but it's a special kind of chord. What is B? Anyone know? Diameter. So if you want to write those in just so you have reference, great. But it asked me for tangent of a circle, so my answer was A. But if you get a test with a different one on there, now you can have those words written down for what they are. Okay, we're on number eight. Number eight says, if MT is a diameter, then what is the measure of this? So here's what they want to know. And they're telling us that this is a diameter. So what do I know about a diameter? Do I know a number of degrees, you guys, for this part of the circle? So I know it's period one, but you guys are my quietest class and it just kills me. And so I'm just going to have to, for purposes of time, just go for it. And it means that some of you are going to fall asleep instead of being engaged, but here we go. So diameter equals 180. So if this part is 180 and this part is 42, we can now say, hey, the whole circle equals 360. So what is the work I do for this one? I do 360 minus 180 is 180. And then I do 180 minus the 42. Go ahead and do that, please. 180 minus the 42. And that's going to give us our missing part because this part is half of my circle. Ethan, will you subtract that for me on your calculator? You do need to have a calculator out for the test, please. Uh, there's yellow calculators over there if you need one, or you can use Desmos, whatever you prefer. Remember, you guys, if you need a yellow calculator, go grab it now. All right, who got it? 180, go for it. 138, and remember you guys, I'm gonna be marking off on units, so you have to put the degrees to get full credit there. Okay, this is going away in just a second. Any questions on that one? That's supposed to be one of the easier ones at the beginning of the test, like, oh yeah, whole circle's 360, I just subtract these two things off. Are you guys gonna remember that the Diameter means it's a semicircle, means it's 180. Okay. Next is area of a sector. So you might notice these are not going in order like 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. They're just going to jump into circles in, gen in general. This is the last thing we did. So formula for area of a sector went like this. My part, and by the way, we can call this A and B or not, doesn't matter of the whole circle times the whole area. My part of the whole circle times the whole area. So what is my part? My part happens to be 110. What is my radius? My radius is six. Remember, you're going to give me both an exact and an approximate answer. We all need a calculator right now to do this. Over here becomes a full area of 36 pi, 
Why is it 36? Because it's six squared or six times six. And then the 110 over 360, I'm going to reduce that. First of all, 10 goes into both. The zero can go away. And it just leaves me 11 over 36 as my reduced fraction. You might notice that both this 36 and this 36 can now cross out. My exact answer is 11 pi units squared. 11 pi. So where did that 11 come from? I cross canceled the fraction. The 36 is cross out. Some of you might want to do 11 times 36 and then divide it by 36 and you'd go, oh, it's just 11. Okay, just kidding. But if that makes more sense for you, do it that way. So now we take a final step. And again, you guys have to be my calculator. Now we're actually going to multiply 11 times 3.14 to get the final answer. And also, remember that in Math 3, they want you to use the pi button. If you want to do 11 times the real pi button, like real Math 3 students, feel free. I'm going to give you credit for either. So 11 times 3.14, can someone be my calculator and let me know what you get? Okay, go for it, Ariadna. Can someone confirm that they like that rounding and everything looks good with what they got? Yes? Okay. And then what are my units, Ariadna? Good. And I just realized that I put unit squared right here, and I need to change it to centimeters. So I'm going to highlight on the test my two answers. I'm going to highlight the exact answer, 11 pi centimeters squared, and I'm going to highlight my approximate answer. And remember that for approximate, we put those little approximation symbols. I'm going to pause here for a second. Who has questions? Where can I get that formula? That formula is in your study guide. That formula is now on this practice test. Questions. Okay, if the part you're worried about is the reducing of the fraction, that's only part of the points, right? So just get that exact answer and be like, oh, well, I don't know how to reduce fractions. Great. Something we'll work on next year in Math 3. Okay, find the arc length. Notice this time they didn't put the radius, like, up to it, so it makes some of us think, like, it can't be the same kind of question. It is. It doesn't matter where the radius is. It wants to know where my part is. So arc length formula goes like this. My part of the arc out of the total 360, but a arc length is not part of the area, it's part of the whole circumference. So what is my part? My part happens to be 50 this time out of the 360. And then it's 2 times pi times my radius, which is 5 millimeters. Does everybody see where I plugged in the 50 that they gave me and where I plugged in the 5 radius that they gave me? So 2 times 5, that's my full circumference is 10 pi. And I'm going to reduce the 50 over 360. 10 goes into both, and that leaves me 5 over 36. I can then reduce this further. I'm going to go way up here. It's going to become 50 pi over 36. 2 can go into both, 25 pi over 18. My fully reduced exact answer. Do you see all those steps and how I took them? First I divided by 10, then I divided by 2. Nothing else goes into 25 or 18. This one is millimeters for my units. It is not squared because it's just a distance. It's not squared because it's not area. So do you want to write a note to yourself? Area is always going to be squared. 
circumference or part of the circumference is always going to be plane units. All right. So I now need someone to grab their calculator. When I do the calculation on the calculator, I, I don't know if I reduce the fraction correct sometimes. So I want you to go way back up to the beginning to type this in for me. Please do 50 divide by 360 on your calculator times 10 times pi. 50 divided by 360, enter, times 10 times pi. Go way back up to the beginning to plug that in. You could even type in 50 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 5. And can I have someone read us that answer for that calculation? Is it exactly 16? Did I give you one that works out even like that? Can someone else confirm what they got? So you're doing 50 divided by 360 times 10 times pi. What'd you get, Lucas? 50 divided by 360. Yeah, if you do the 3.14, it's how Apex trained you, but in real Math 3, you're going to do the pi button. Okay, can someone else confirm what they got? Jay, did you get that? Oh, okay. And was that approximate, you guys, or did it come out to exactly 4.36, Lucas? Approx, okay. There we go. And then what are my units, Lucas? Look right here real quick. Millimeters. Millimeters, you got it. So when do I use degrees? When they're asking me for an angle or they're asking me for the measure of an arc? When do I use units? When they're asking me for the length of the arc or when they're asking me for area? Good question. Okay, now the next one is gonna be an extra credit on the test. Find the radius of the circle. It's working backwards to find the R. So if we know that Already, the arc length is 8 pi. And we know that the arc length is equal to r part over 360 times the full thing. And I know what the arc length is this time. It's having you plug it in outside. It's an output problem. My part is the 120. 120 over 36, or sorry, 360, and then times 2 pi r, r is the missing thing this time. This is an extra credit. You can totally skip it on the test when you take it if you don't want to. So for this one to work backwards, 120 goes into 360 how many times, you guys? Divide that for me. 360 divided by 120 is what? Okay, it's three. You guys are killing me. Uh, two thirds pi times the radius equals eight pi. So first of all, the pi's could divide out. Like if I divided both sides by pi, they would just go away. But if you don't notice that, you can do this in a couple steps. You can say times three to both sides is gonna give me 24 pi equals two pi r. Does everybody see how I first multiplied by the denominator to start? And then we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And we get 12. The answer for my radius is 12. This is an extra credit on the test. Feel free to skip it and go back to it if you have time. Finding the radius going backwards. Okay, measure of x and y. Notice there's a two-part problem here, okay? 
what is the rule for inscribed angle theorem? Well, it says that my angle is half of the intercepted arc. So if my angle is 42, going out to the arc, I'm going to double it. If I'm given the arc going into the angle, I'm going to half it. Notice when I'm going from big to small is when I'm going to half it. Notice when I'm going from small to big is when I double it. It's asking you to do both of these to make sure you get which one is the half, which one is the double. Take a minute to do this one on your own. Going from small to big, you're going to double it. Going from the outer arc in, you're going to half it. I'm going to call on you guys to give me answers. Please try these two. All right, I'm gonna start with Bella. Bella, if this smaller inner angle is 42, what did you get for the X? Did you double it or half it? Good, and what is 42 times two gonna give you? Great, and then what are my units? Degrees, you got it. When I'm finding the measure of an arc or an angle, it's always degrees. And then I'm now on the opposite one, and I'm going to Jada. Jada, when I'm going from big arc into little angle, do I double it or half it? Good. And so y is equal to half of that 94. What would you get? Great. Raise your hand if you got either of those right on your own. Only one person? Uh-oh. Okay. Um, moving down to this one, if the measure of SDU, literally when I read this, I go like this, SDU. I touch my pencil to the corners to see which angle it is. If the measure is 78, find SYU. So they're having you go from a central angle to an inscribed angle. They're having you go from central to inscribed. So what do I write? I write central angle equals arc measure. And that means that if this is 78, then this is 78. So I write the reason central angle equals arc measure, and I fill it in. Now that I have that outer arc, now I can go get the inscribed angle. When I go from big arc to little inscribed angle, am I going to double it or half it, Morgan? Morgan, when I go from a big 78 to this little angle, am I going to double it or half it? Take half of 78 for me and tell me what you get. Thirty-nine, thank you. So my angle is thirty-nine degrees. Notice how I'm writing my answers on that answer column. I'm showing all the work, squeezing it in the box. I can even use up here for work if I need it, like I've been kind of overflowing there. I'm ready to flip to the next page. Let me give everybody a minute to finish that. Remember that I will be attaching this key to the bin for your reference if you need it. Okay, here we go. Uh, circle shown below. They're telling us the measure of PR. So check this out. PR is equal to 140. Please label it. And the measure of angle RPQ, R. PQ is equal to 50. Label it. Those are two givens in the problem.
So because I have this 50, don't I also have that arc? Because I have this 50, I've got that arc. What am I going to do to it, Lucas? Am I going to half it or double it for that arc? Double, double it. So what's 50 times 2? 100. So now I've got that piece of the arc too. So what do I write? I write inscribed angle theorem. And I say measure of angle RPQ is 2 times the 50. Uh, no. I say arc, RQ, is 2 times the 50. All right, so now that I've got that, they're asking me, uh, what is the measure of PQ? And don't I know that a whole circle is 360? So I go 360 minus 100 is 260 minus 140. Can someone get me that? 360 minus 100 minus 140. Thank you. And then what are my units on that? Is it degrees or units? What do you think? Good. Now, does everybody see that in this case it was actually a multiple choice? So the answer we should have written is D. 120. So when we've got those little letters on here, they're actually giving you a multiple choice. Cool? All right. The next one is another extra credit. It is the secant secant angle theorem because it's got two secants drawn through with an angle touching at the end. And the rule for this is that the measure of the angle E is equal to half of the major arc minus the minor arc, or as we wrote before in shortcut, big minus small. Do you see this time how they gave us the numbers like the easier one that I showed Ariadna, how we have the major as 84 and we have the minor as 28? So please go do this calculation for me. Half of 84 minus 28 and see what you get. Take a minute to finish that calculation. Can someone do 84 minus 28 for me? What's that going to be? 84 minus 28, Morgan? The whole thing? So 28 times 2, is it 56? Can someone confirm that? Yes? I'm trusting your guys' calculator skills. Am I right to trust that, Lucas? I think so. <laughs> and then what is that, guys? That is degrees because it's the measure of an angle. Okay, remember that I'm going to be telling you which ones to highlight that are extra credit. This was part of the 5.6 extra credit homework. So you don't have to do these ones that are extra credit. They will just give you extra credit points on the test if you do them. All right, next one is radius tangent theorem. because I've got this little radius here and I've got a tangent line to my thing. Given that this angle, CBD, is 25, I can go label a little tiny 25 in here, they're asking for CBR. And this rule is actually the same as inscribed angle, where it's going to be half that intercepted arc. But we got to get this arc in order to know what half of it is. So what do I know? If this is 25, don't I know by inscribed angle theorem that this would be double? This would be double. So if I know this is 50, see how this right here is a diameter? and semicircle is equal to 180. 
so I know this is 180. So if this is 50 and this is 180, I know those are 230. Can't I subtract to get that all, whole rest of the arc? So I'm going to go 360 minus 180. Then I'm going to go 180 minus 50. And I know that this guy over here is 130. Now what is the rule for that little like L-shaped looking thing? It is half of the intercepted arc. Can someone please do half of the 130 for me? And I'm going to show you where this is on that justifications page in just a second. What's half of 130? Half of 120 is 60, so half of 130 is 65. And so my answer is B. All right. So if I go back over here, where is it on this justifications page? Do you see the second? Oh, sorry. We have to still write it. This is the tangent chord angle theorem because it's got a chord drawn in somewhere that we're getting the angle in between the chord and that tangent. So tangent chord theorem is the second to last one. And I forgot to write it. Tangent chord theorem. We actually don't need this guy because we didn't use the 90. It wasn't needed. You guys can cross that out if you want. Okay. Um, in the figure below, AB is a tangent to the circle. And secant BD intersects this circle too uh, at the points. If AC is 70 and AD is 110, uh, what is the measure of ABC? So again, we know that this little angle in here, X, is equal to half of the big minus the small. So take a minute to calculate that for me. Half of the big minus the small. Let's see what you get. Half of the big minus the small. What is 110 minus 70? Oh, wait, hang on. AB is a tangent of BD. What is the measure of ABC? Oh, good. I am solving ABC. Okay. So half of 40 is 20. And that doesn't have an answer, so I made a mistake. So go ahead and put that in. Now, if on the test anybody thinks they find a mistake like that in the test that I made, please just raise your hand and let me know. I got this answer, but it's not part of the multiple choice. So this one is 20 degrees. All right. Um, this next one is going back now to there's a slight change in this. There's now going to be a plus. So the measure of ABD is half of the sum of the two arcs. So going back to when you guys learned this formula, this was like the 5.7, I think. This is now the sum of the two arcs. So the extra credit ones are minuses, but this one is adding when it's inside. So this is going to be 100 plus 45, and then we just take half of it. A hundred plus forty-five and just take half of it. Can you tell me what you get for that? Um, let's go James this time, be my calculator. What's half of one forty-five? So 
70 something point five. And then because we're finding the measure of the angle, don't forget the degrees. Okay, last two are our circle formula. This was the last section, the 6.5. Okay, the rule for the circle formula is that I'm always going to need a radius and a center before I graph it. The radius comes from the r squared at the end. So your formula goes like this, x minus h squared, y minus k squared, uh, actually, I think they used a V instead of a K in your current text, equals R squared. So if R squared is 25, what's my R? What do I have to do with the 25? What's that thing called, you guys? Square root it. So my radius is 5. Does everybody see where the 5 comes from, from the 25? I square root that. And then... I'm looking specifically here and here for my center. If it's an x minus 3, it's a positive 3 in the center. If it's an y plus 2, it's a negative 2 in my center. Please go put a dot at 3, negative 2. Please go put a dot at 3, negative 2. You start by graphing the center. And then from there, you're going to count out five. One, two, three, four, five. Up, one, two, three, four, five. Left, one, two, three, four, five. Down, one, two, three, four, five. Count the radius in all the directions. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you went and tried to do 25, you'd be like, well, that's crazy. And you go, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be with 25. It's supposed to be 5. And then do your best to connect it in a whatever looks like a circle. Any questions on graphing that circle, how to get the center or how to get the radius? And last one is going backwards. Looking at the circle, please go count the radius for me, write that number. Looking at the circle, please get me that center point, and then we're going to write the equation. Can someone tell me what they get for the center when they count it? The center is going back and up. Make your appropriate signs. Back and up. Okay, I hope you got a negative 1, 3 for your center. And the radius is counting from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. The radius is 4. So my equation goes like this, x minus a negative 1 squared. It becomes positive 1 squared. Is everybody okay with that sign change, how I've drilled that in? And then my y y minus 3 squared, because it's a positive 3 point, it's a negative 3 in the parentheses. And what's it going to be equal to, you guys? If my r is 4, my r squared is 16. Great, right, listen to what's going to happen. Everyone is going to step outside once they finish writing this and walk 20 steps in a, any direction. You've got to get the blood flow back to your brain. You've been sitting for too long and no one's talking. So we got to get up and move. Everybody's going to step outside. When you get back after taking your at least 20 steps, by the way, if you need a longer break than that, you can go to the bathroom. You can walk around the building. I don't care. We're all going to step outside. When you come back, you're going to get ready. You're going to have that calculator tab or calculator ready. You're going to have your justifications page open. You're going to have this practice test handy. You're going to get ready. What else do you want to open up? Do you want to take out your big books? Okay. Questions on what we're about to do? Any questions on these last two circle ones? Okay. You guys ask me more questions online. I hate in person with masks and dividers, <laughs> or I should say period one map. 
Period one math is always hard. We're too tired. Okay, so let's all step outside. Everybody put your stuff down, relax. We're going to go 20 steps in any direction or further. And I'll meet you guys back here. Come on out. your phone. 